Hey beauties, welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, I am kind of gonna be unboxing, well not really unboxing, but using products that I received this month, February, uh, for BoxyCharm. I have both the regular subscription box and the premium box. If you guys have missed January's upload for BoxyCharm, definitely pause this video and go check that one out first. It'll give you all the updates and rundown between the difference in the two boxes. But this month I decided to still use products from both boxes, but just kind of pick and choose which ones I wanted to use. I did use the majority of the actual makeup products in today's video, but if you guys want a full in-depth look inside both boxes, you can definitely go ahead over to my Instagram. I have it on my little Instagram stories on my page under Boxy. So definitely go check that out if you're interested in what I got in the entire box. I'm not sure if this is how I'm gonna continue to go about doing BoxyCharm unboxings. Now that they've incorporated the premium box and I have two boxes every month, I kind of just still want to stick to doing one dedicated video for BoxyCharm. So I thought this would be a good idea of me picking and choosing which products I want to incorporate in the makeup look and then revealing the whole entire box to you guys on my Instagram. If you guys like that idea, you like this video, definitely let me know by giving it a thumbs up. Also, before we get started, definitely make sure you're subscribed. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. Also, make sure you're clicking the bell so you can be notified every single time that I upload, which is every Wednesday and Friday. And with that, I'm gonna zoom you guys in a little bit closer and we can get started on this right here makeup look. So, stay tuned. So we are of course gonna start with the eyes. I do have my eyes already primed, of course using my NARS Soft Matte Concealer, and this is in the shade Biscuit, which is medium dark one. So I just used that to prime my lids as always, set it down with a little bit of powder. I did use the Stay Matte from Rimmel, but as far as the eyeshadow palette goes, we are gonna be using this right here. This is the Carity Picante Palette. This is a 21 shadow palette. And it does have a variation of different finishes inside the palette. So if we just kind of like open that up, you guys can see this is a very, very warm tone palette, which I'm all about. And I can definitely create something from day to night using this. But you guys know I'm obsessed with my warm tones. This palette does retail for $29. And this is what we're going to use today. I think to start off, I am just going to go ahead and use Dune, which is this orange shade right here kind of like as my transitional color just popping it into the crease um, I don't feel like we're gonna do anything too exciting today as far as eyeshadow goes just keep it really really simple so as you guys can tell this shadow right here isn't too different from my skin tone honestly so this is just really just serving as a transitional shade nothing too crazy and I'm just popping this right in my crease I don't necessarily need like a transition shade, honestly. I think that's just kind of like overdone at this point. I don't think too many people use transition shades anymore, but it still is a really, really nice color. If you are a lighter complexion than me, this shade will probably look super beautiful on you. But again, I'm just popping this in my crease and just gonna use a light, light layer of this. Next shade I'm gonna grab in the palette is Harvest, which is this orange shade right here. So I'm just gonna take a little bit of that and I'm also gonna use this um, on my outer part and kind of just like build this shadow up. So I'm just tapping it on the outer part of my lid and kind of in that crease and just a little bit at a time and then blending it. I feel like this shadow definitely builds very, very pigmented and very nicely. I really love the shade of orange that this is. It's kind of like a burnt orange almost, and it's really pretty. To be honest with you guys, the reason we're doing such an easy look today is because my brushes are dirty and I have not washed them, so any takers on wanting to wash my brushes, that'll be great. But no, seriously, I have to wash my brushes today, so I don't have very many eyeshadow brushes to work with, so I just figured we'll do something super simple, and then I'll wash my brushes and we can get back to the more uh, dramatic kind of looks. So now that we have that built up a little bit, I am gonna go back in with Dune 
which is that first shade that we use and just kind of use that just to kind of blend out these outer portions of the shadow just so it's nicely blended and smoke it out a little bit. Now I'm going to take this shade down here called Spicy, which is kind of like a deeper orange. I feel like this one and this one over here are kind of similar, but this one is the darker one of the two. So I'm just going to grab a little bit of that and kind of enhance that outer portion of my eye. So I'm just tapping it on the lowest part of my lid out here, and then I'll go up a little, but I'm not taking it into the crease. I just want to kind of deepen up this outer V area. So basically what I'm doing is just building up these different shades and just kind of intermixing them, kind of creating a smoky eye. Normally when people do smoky eyes, they think brown or black, but you can definitely create a smoky eye with pretty much any color. Um, so that's what I'm doing with these orange tone shades. Now I think I want to grab Flamencio, which is this one right here, which I had said previous that it's very similar to spicy. And I'm going to tap this in the same area as well, but also bring it a little, you know, towards the center of my lid and just kind of just tap that shadow on there just to add a little something. I don't know why, but my eyeshadow is reminding me of Hot Cheetos. <laughs> but it's super cute. And I love the way that these shades are just like blending with one another. Now for the inner part of the lid, I don't know if I should use Haley, which is more kind of like this color or bronzed. Um, let's see. So this one's Haley. Again, very similar in tone to the eyeshadow. And then you have this one. I think I'm going to go in with bronzed just because it's different. If we went in with Haley, it'd be more like a monochromatic look, but I want a little bit of dimension. So let's go in with bronzed, which is more of that bronze tone. Definitely helps to spray the brush every time. Gives it a more melted look and I kind of like that. I think I'm gonna take Haley actually now, just a little bit of that. And I'm gonna put that in the center of my lid in between bronzed and that other shade flamingo or flamencio kind of interlocking the two and then just going to rebuild up that outer portion of my eye again so i'm going to grab a little bit more of flamencio and just tap this out here so i think that's super pretty as it is i'm going to clean up underneath my eyes and apply my lashes and mascara and then we can move on to the face. So I have two different primers here. I'm only gonna use one of the two, but the first one I have is the Pure 4-in-1. This is their Energizing and Correcting Primer. There we go. Uh, it has four different ingredients in it. It has probiotics, aloe, caffeine, and coconut water. So that's what the 4-in-1 is. It's also supposed to energize and rescue your skin, and it's silicone-free. But the one we're actually gonna be going in with is this Tarte Base Tape. This is their hydrating primer. So since we're gonna be using a mattifying foundation, I figured I'd go in with the hydrating primer. So this is supposed to be 12 hour wear. It has coconut infused in this one as well. Smooths appearance, extends wear foundation. So we will have to see. Obviously, I'll have to keep my makeup on for a while to really know if it's gonna extend the wear of my makeup. I'm not really sure how long I'll have it on today, but gonna use this one uh, because, I don't know, I seem to favor it out of the two. Whoa, super liquidy. I'm just gonna pop this on my face. Very, very cooling on the skin. Definitely see the glow from the primer. So I definitely have a nice glow going on from that primer, but I am gonna set my face with a little bit of this Maybelline Fit Me Translucent Powder. You guys know I love to set my primers. It's just what I love to do, but I'm in fact not gonna even set the whole face. I'm just really gonna set like by my nose area and above my lip, just because this is 
where I get the most oily. So I really don't want too much hydration over here. So I'm just gonna set this in place really quickly. I'm also gonna bring a little bit up here in like my forehead area in between my brows. So I'm setting basically like the T-zone. So just using very, very little today to set. Normally I use a lot more than that. Now I'm gonna go in with my foundation. I'm just using the Wet n Wild. This is the Photo Focus foundation, but this is the matte version of that foundation, which is the initial like um, formula that launched. So just applying a little bit of that. And I am using the shade Caramel. I am gonna spray my face before I blend in the foundation. This is the Glow Recipe Watermelon Glow Ultra Fine Mist. And this is the packaging, but I have to open it. So this is what I'm gonna use to spray over on top of my foundation. I find that using any type of setting spray or primer spray uh, with your foundation before you blend it in allows it to set better and last longer. So we're just gonna use a light mist of this. Smells so good on our face. And then we're gonna take our sponge and start to blend this in. What I love about this foundation is that it's so lightweight and definitely very buildable um, if you wanted more coverage. So I am gonna go in just with a second layer, but this foundation is definitely very lightweight. And I absolutely love it because it feels like you have nothing on your face. So I did apply my concealer off camera just because it is a new purchase and I do want to use it in a future video or it'll be coming soon. But I couldn't help myself. I used it today so I was just like we're just going to skip over that part. It's not like it came in BoxyCharm or anything. So uh, now to set all of that down I am going to use this powder right here. This is the Ciate London everyday vacay this is their coconut setting powder don't mind my box it's a little toe up from the flow up but the outside packaging isn't what matters what's inside is what matters and this is what it looks like super super pretty a nice soft pink touch to it it's just super cute the powder however does intimidate me because it is super white um you guys see how white that powder is so hopefully there's no flashback no flashback but we will test it out so I'm just gonna use this as I normally would any other powder with my sponge to set now I'm not gonna be baking today I'm literally just using this powder to set I think if I'm not mistaken it says this powder is perfect for baking but like I said not baking today just literally just setting the face and it does not in the pan but when you apply it under your eye it kind of has like a light iridescent coconut smell which I'm definitely not mad at but if you don't like powder I mean it's not like super strong so it went away already but so far I really like the powder doesn't like it definitely gave it like a brightening effect on top of that we were using a brightening concealer but I felt like the powder helped to brighten it even more I am going to do my bottom lash line really quickly. I'm basically just going to take those same variation of shades and just smoke them at the bottom of my lash line just to kind of bring the look together. Nothing too crazy. You guys already know the drill. Um, I'm not going to take that transitional shade that we use because it's kind of pointless. I'm just going to drag these shades down here just to kind of complete the look. I also want to take a little bit of Sunrise, which is this orange shimmer shade down here. And I'm actually going to use this as my inner corner pop. So real quickly, got to pop some color back into this face. And I'm just going to use the Coco Contour Palette to do that. And I'm going to use a uh, dark cocoa down here and just use that to bronze up my cheeks a little bit. We did receive three brushes. I have three different brushes here from Almar Cosmetics. This is their complexion brush, which is kind of like a angled brush. And um, I would use that for blush or something. Then we have this one. This is the bronzer brush, which I will be using. 
And then we have this uh, brightening brush, which is more like for highlighter, I'm assuming. So I'm gonna go in with this one, the bronzer brush, and just bronze up my cheeks really quickly. I'm not sure how I'm gonna like this brush, to be honest, but we'll see. I feel like this brush is really helping to like diffuse the bronzer. Can't say it's my favorite brush that I've ever used, but maybe just a little bit more playtime with it and it'll be perfect. Now for blush, we received the Hourglass Ambient Lighting Blush and mine is in Dim Infusion. So this is the packaging. And of course, opening it up, super cute packaging. You have this very, very pretty pink toned blush. Super cute, super pink. So we're gonna use this today to blush up our cheeks. And I'm just gonna use the complexion brush for this. So. Definitely pigmented. So I feel like the blush is super pretty, very pink and dusty and just a nice flush of color back into the skin. Now we're gonna highlight, I am gonna be using the brightening brush and I'm gonna take the Benefit Twinkle Dandelion or Dandelion Twinkle highlighter and it just looks like this. It's just like a nice little pink highlight and I'm gonna use this with this brush. Now this highlighter isn't like super beaming, like it kinda has like that glow from within feel which is what I love about it. But I figured we'd go in with this one today because it's just kind of matching the pink peachy vibes that we got going on. So the highlight applied very nicely. The brush is pretty nice. Now I'm just gonna finish off and do my lips and kind of just like fix up my brows a little bit. And then I'll be back to close out today's video and give you guys my final thoughts. All right guys, so this is the finished and final look. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments down below. Honestly, looking at my makeup, I didn't realize that I basically went with the theme of the palette. And by that, I mean like the color story in the front is kind of what I have going on on the eyes with the exception of like this darker purple color right here, but you get the same vibes and that wasn't even on purpose. But speaking of this palette, I feel like it's super affordable as far as like when you compare the quality of the palette to the price point, it makes sense. That's basically what I'm trying to say. It makes sense. I do love the color story, obviously. You guys know that from Jump Off. But warm tones are just my comfort zone and what I love to use. And I feel like there are tons of different variations of looks that you can create with this palette. Although they're like similar shades as far as like orange and, and like a pink burgundy kind of color. Um, you have a little bit of brown in here. You can definitely be versatile with your look. You can deepen it up, make it nighttime appropriate. You can do something light and airy for the daytime. Uh, just genuinely loving this palette and the way that the shadows perform. The pigmentation on it is great. So definitely a good uh, item that came in the box. Also, I am loving this blush from Hourglass. It gave just like the perfect amount of color back into my cheeks and I used to be so intimidated by blush, but now your girl just loves blush. I just love everything about makeup, honestly. But this blush was super pigmented, first of all. I normally don't gravitate towards such pink blushes, but this one right here is definitely an exception. This one and another one, I believe by Milani, that I really, really love, but it just gives a nice fresh flush of color and I will definitely continue to use this. The mist on this Glow Recipe Watermelon Mist right here was like no other. Honestly, I kind of low key want to spray my face now. But it just smells so good. The mist is so fine and it doesn't like drench your face, which I really, really love. Um, it was nice to use this like to mix in the foundation. I felt like it helped it apply a lot better. Not that the Wet n Wild foundation has issues applying, but I did notice that using this specific spray in combination with that mattifying foundation allowed the foundation to go on a little bit more dewier and it wasn't as matte um, as it normally is if I didn't use setting spray. So just a little side note on what I noticed, but I really do like this. I will continue to use this. And then the base tape from Tarte 
not crazy about it. It definitely doesn't claim to do anything pore filling or anything like that. So if I do use this like for hydration um, underneath my matte foundations, uh, I will definitely use something pore filling like in this area, like next to my cheeks and my nose, just because I suffer with a lot of pores in this area. And it didn't magnify it or enhance it or anything, but obviously it's not gonna make it go away. So in the case of using this primer, I will use a secondary primer with it. As far as the brushes from Almar Cosmetics, I will start with this one, the bronzer brush. It's not a terrible brush. Uh, the bristles are super soft, but the brush itself is kind of a little bit like condensed uh, to where it doesn't really move as freely as I would love. It's not a bad brush. It didn't apply it terribly. It won't be my go-to brush, but I will definitely use it again. I did really like the brightening brush for my highlight. It disperses the highlight very nicely. I can't talk for whatever reason, but it disperses the highlight very nicely. And I just love the way that the brush feels and it's kind of dome shaped. So it's just got that perfect little tip to get, you know, like the high points of my nose and right here on the bridge. So a very nice brush to highlight with. And then the complexion brush, I would just, again, continue to use it for blush, so very nice brushes. Um, I could have done without this one, but glad that I have all three and I will continue to you know, use them. They won't be like my go-to, especially the bronzing one, but again, not bad. And then last but not least, we have the Ciate London um, Everyday Vacay Coconut Setting Powder. This right here was super intimidating because I thought that it wasn't gonna work out but it did add brightening to my under eyes. It gave that brightening effect, which I like, but it seemed to melt pretty well into the skin. And I'm super, super happy about that because I was really, really scared that it was just gonna ruin everything, but it seemed to work out pretty well. I do wanna test whether it has flashbacks, so I am gonna take a quick photo with my camera. And nope, we are all good. Oh. We're all good. Uh, no flashback whatsoever. So, hey, looks like this powder is a win all around. So as you guys can tell, I pretty much have nothing bad to say about any of the items in this month's box. Again, if you want the full rundown and the full scope on everything that I received in both the BoxyCharm Premium Box and the regular BoxyCharm Box, head over to my Instagram at Essence Janae click on the little boxy tab, which is like in my Instagram stories on my page, and you guys can see what I received in its entirety over there. Other than that, I don't have anything else to say. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. I love you guys so much, and I will see you super, super soon in the next video or vlog, whichever one comes first.